Ah, the guillotine. From the get-go and to this day, it is the must-have accessory for any French protest or revolution. And French revolutions, there have been many. In fact, how many? Well, if you want to find out, today is your lucky day, since I'm doing a collab with my good friend at History House Productions, who will be discussing this very subject. So, after this video, make sure to check out his channel too. Despite its strong association with the French Revolution, the guillotine is much more ancient than that. For example, the Halifax gibbet was used in England as early as the 13th century up until the mid-17th century, when Oliver Cromwell forbade capital punishment for petty theft. Heck, the French Revolution wasn't even the first time a guillotine was used on French soil since it was employed in 1632 for the execution of the Duke of Montmorency in Toulouse. So, if Dr. Guillotin didn't invent the guillotine, why name it after him? Well, let's find out. Dr. Joseph Ignace Guillotin was born prematurely on the 28th of May 1738 in Bordeaux, France. Family tradition wants that his mother gave birth to him after being startled by the agonizing screams of a man being broken on the wheel. This story is supposed to have shaped Dr. Guillotin's future pursuit of a more humane method of execution. Having moved to Paris to study medicine and become a physician, he wrote in 1788 a pamphlet arguing for more non-nobility representation in the Estates Générales, which got him elected the following year as a representative of the Third Estate. And following the tennis court oath, he became a deputy of the new French government, the National Constituent Assembly. There, he mostly directed his attention towards medical reform until the 10th of October 1789, where, during a debate on capital punishment, he proposed a bill that stated, He saw in this a less brutal and more egalitarian method of execution, which may sound ridiculous until you learn how executions were done back then. You see, in the Ancien Régime, capital punishment was a complicated affair with different executions and function of the crime and the person. While hanging was the most common method, beheading was reserved to nobles and could take up to two or three strikes. Burning was for heretics and arsonists, death by boiling for counterfeiters, dismemberment for high treason and regicide, and the breaking wheel was left to highway robbers and murderers. The latter was the very torture that supposedly led to Dr. Guillaustin's premature birth. It consisted of breaking the bones of the condemned to braid them around the wheel, which was then risen up on a spike, where, unless granted mercy, the condemned was left to agonize in pain while being pecked by birds. So yeah, I guess the guillotine was better. In the same way, amputation is better than dying of a septic shock. At first, his proposition gained little traction until he delivered an eloquent speech on the 1st of December, which he ended, perhaps too eagerly, by saying, Now with my machine, I cut off your head in the twinkling of an eye, and you never feel it. This inappropriate remark immediately catapulted him to national fame, as his words became a popular joke. The following day, the renowned royalist journal, Les Actes des Apôtres, derided his comment into a song. And then offhand, his genius planned, the machine that simply kills, that's all, which after him we call guillotine. Ironically, the author of the song would later be guillotined. The song was the first time anyone had used that name, a name that Dr. Guillotin would come to regret his whole life. You see, unlike uh, Robespierre, Dr. Guillotin was actually against the death penalty, but he did not fool himself, knowing very well it wouldn't be abolished so quickly. Instead, he hoped that the use of a more humane method of execution would be a first step towards its abolition. That first step was taken almost two years later, on the 3rd of June 1791, when the assembly voted in favor of carrying all death sentences by decapitation. The design of a machine that could do just that was tasked to the secretary of the Academy of Surgery, Dr. Antoine Louis, who submitted to the assembly a detailed report on the subject the following year in March. By April, the machine had been built and tested, at first on animals and then the corpse of children and women. From these tests, Dr. Louis would come to recommend the emblematic angle blade instead of the crescent shape that had been used until then. 
Ironically enough, the memoirs of the chief executioner, who looked as creepy as you would expect, claim it was actually the king himself, an amateur locksmith, who recommended the design, while offering his own neck to demonstrate why. And on the 25th of April, 1792, a highwayman named Nicolas Jacques Pelletier became the first man guillotine. While the execution was deemed a success, the public's reception was underwhelming at first, with a crowd demanding the wooden scaffold back. But eventually they came to love it, to the point of nicknaming it La Sainte Guillotine, probably because they allowed much more executions than before. A month later, Dr. Louis died. It's commonly believed that he was guillotine, but that is unlikely since it would be more than a year before the reign of terror started. It is also commonly believed that Dr. Guillotin was guillotined, and as much as I want that to be true for historical irony, it is not. He did get imprisoned, but was saved by the downfall of Robespierre, who, spoiler, got guillotined. Instead, he died at the peaceful age of 75 in 1814, deeply regretting that his name was attached to an instrument of terror. After his death, his children petitioned to have the guillotine renamed, but the petition was refused, and they were allowed instead to change their own name. Victor Hugo would later say, They are miserable men. Christopher Columbus cannot attach his name to his discovery. Guillotin cannot detach his from his invention. And that is how the guillotine became France's primary method of execution, up until its last use in 1977. Yes, 1977. Not 1777, not 1877, but very much 1977. On the same year Star Wars A New Hope came out, a man has been guillotined in France. On the same year the Apple II computer came out, the Atari was released, and Elvis uh -huh. Presley died. A man was beheaded in France. While these guys were in power, and people dressed like this, we were still chopping heads off in France. Yep. The last person to be guillotined was Hamida Jandoubi, a Tunisian immigrant who had kidnapped, tortured, and murdered his girlfriend, Elisabeth Bousquet. In February 1977, he was sentenced to death, and on September, he was guillotined, thus making him the last person executed in Western Europe and the last person beheaded in the Western world. Four years later, the death penalty was finally abolished in France in 1981. This was Barris, so I will see you in two weeks. But until then, my friends, merde. Thank you.